everybody. What is going on? It is Dunbar Snack Bar here with MLB 13 The Show, and we have got some Atlanta Braves franchise coming your way right here. Uh, I want to apologize in advance. This is uh, the second of two videos that are going up today. I had some like serious technical difficulties going back into it. Here I am making my first videos, getting back from vacation, and yeah, I'm already starting to have some problems. But anyway, you probably recognize the Mets and the Braves, the two teams that are going to be squaring off here in this one so i gotta get back into the commentary i haven't done it here in uh four or five days now so i don't know i might be a little rusty here but we're gonna get the game started off with angelton simmons who will hit this one into right field a little bit late on that swing but that is okay that's gonna allow me to round first head on over to second and man if there was somebody right on the bag here and that had been thrown right on over to second would not have been pretty. Probably would have shown up here on this video, but instead we've got a double. Chris Johnson coming up to the plate next here. This one is just going to be a little ground out here over to first. I'm going to make him think I'm going to head home. Maybe force a bad throw, but I get back to third just in time. I got to be a little bit careful. I don't want to go ahead and advance and or you know start advancing and then get thrown out here as I'm trying to come back. That would be pretty bad too. But Justin Upton now will also ground out here, this time over to second, but that will allow Angelton Simmons to come home. We've got the first run of the game right now. Just a little uh, small ball right there, some efficient uh, hitting here to bring the runner home. Not what I would have wanted, don't get me wrong, but I'm going to go ahead and take one run here to start things off. So Mets starting off their hits here too. Nobody sitting on first for Hayward to go ahead and try and throw him out at first. He's leading the National League right now in assists here from right field, which has got him as the front runner for the Golden Glove. That'd be really cool if I could get that, because I don't think that in any baseball game I've had previous uh, have I ever gotten a Golden Glove. I've gotten Silver Sluggers, I've gotten batting titles, I've gotten Cy Young Awards, MVPs, Rookie of the Years, but I don't think I've ever gotten a Golden Glove. Huh. Anyway, runners on first and second now, right is going to go and hit into a double play. That was actually a sweet move right there by Anderson Simmons after he was on second. Well, we'll take a look at it here one more time because he does like a little spin here and then makes the throw over to first, which is really cool. I mean, that is such a tough play because if you don't time it all right, the momentum of your body is going to force the ball to drift uh, in the direction that you're turning. So the fact that anybody gets a good throw on something like that, I think is noteworthy. But here we go with a home run right here for the Braves. That was a huge hit right there too. So Dan Ugla adding to our lead here by adding that solo run or home run to our total. So it's going to be two to nothing here. Oh, Matt Harvey struggling already. So I was kind of worried about going up against Matt Harvey because you know he was the starter for the National League uh, in the All-Star game. So of course I know this guy has got a lot of great stuff, but the game doesn't necessarily seem to reflect uh, everything that he's got. So I think that's part of the reason why I'm struggling is, well, I don't have any adjusted rosters or anything like that just from like day one here, but ah, almost got him. Almost got him. Every time... There's a hit on over to right. I'm always trying to throw somebody out. I get really excited when I do it too. But count is full right now. No outs. Here we go with another double play. And I was kind of worried I might not be able to get that one because Chris Johnson's throw on over to Ugla at second kind of seemed more like, like a floater than anything else. And I was like, no, if I don't make it, that's not going to be cool. I'd be so mad leisurely throws it on over no it's a double play you got to be all over that but here is another hit for us has a chance to go over the wall but a great catch actually right at the wall i haven't seen too many of those usually if it's going to go to the wall the computer just takes a couple of steps back from it just lets it bounce off and you know goes ahead picks it up makes it throw. no problem all right so still two to nothing here though minor has had a pretty good game thus far, of course. No runs quite yet, but the Mets have been able to get a few hits. Haven't really pitched with Miner for a little bit. 
So I think this is, uh, well, of course, this is the first game I've been pitching as him since we've gotten back from the All-Star break. Um, but we're going to be seeing Beachy coming back soon, which is going to be very nice. I think we've got like maybe one or two more weeks of him on the DL, and then he will be back for us. I've really been struggling with some of my starting pitching uh, before the All-Star break. We saw Hudson was on a cold streak. Oswalt was just failing here. I know he's not a starter, but um, Dallas Braden has really come in and, and you know picked up uh, – you know, right where I, I'd want him to go ahead and be. And he's just been a tremendous starting pitcher for me. So I'm glad that I was able to pick him up. I wish I would have gotten him instead of Oswald. Just right from day one. Because who knows? But we're in a really great position right now. I mean, we're leading the National League East. The Phillies really aren't a major threat to me right now, too. So that's all right if I didn't make the, the best call with that. But anyway, back to the game here. Top of the fifth. Brian McCann going to hit this one deep. Is that going to be enough? Nope, it's not. It's going to bounce off the wall. That's going to be a double for McCann, which is very nice to see because with the way that the computer sets up against McCann, uh, it's very tough to get any type of hit, let alone an extra base hit. So the fact that I got one there, pretty excited about it. I'm hoping that we can go ahead and bring him home. BJ Upton hitting this one on over to short. Ah, oh, man. What was I thinking? That's embarrassing. At least we got BJ Upton on first. <sighs> Have to be honest with it. All right, so this one going deep into right center. It's going to bounce. BJ Upton, get around third, come home. So we're looking at another run. Even though I went ahead and I messed up just a little bit before, able to come back, make up for it. I get a run. I probably would have gotten another one here, but it's three to nothing. 2-2 two -two count now, minor. Throws the curveball, and I don't know if that one hung a little bit over the, the plate, but that is going to be a home run here for the Mets. It will be their first run of the game, so it's about time that they started to draw blood right here. Miner's really not going to be affected too much by that. When you take into account the way that he's been pitching uh, through the rest of the game, he's been doing a pretty good job. So his confidence level, of course, will drop a little bit, but not that much. One, he is a starter. But, you know, two, since, uh, since he's been doing really, really well, if it does drop a little bit, he's still in good shape. Pedro Feliciano coming in now for the Mets. So kind of done with Matt Harvey here. But here we are in the top of the seventh. Freddie Freeman going to hit this one deep into center field. I don't get this one. It does not look like it was a home run by any means. And I've gone back and I've watched it a few times, and I don't know how that's counted as a home run. I didn't get a chance to look at the replay, though, like uh, the actual replay. I'm thinking it just bounced off of, of the wall here, but just the way that it was falling, it looks like it never made it past the wall. But I don't know, kind of trippy. That would be crazy if it was a glitch where it's not really a home run, but we count it as it, even though there's like that denied home run glitch uh, from earlier where it went over the wall, but the computer only counts it as a single. So maybe that's the computer making up for it. Anyway, Angleton Simmons with another hit today. Now, I feel like I haven't been stealing too many bases lately. I haven't had too many opportunities. So I'm going to be stealing right here. And Angleton Simmons safe at second. So I've got three runners right now that are in the top five spots for National League stolen bases. We've got Angleton Simmons, Jason Hayward, and uh, B.J. Upton is the other one. Now, Justin Upton isn't too far behind. So, I mean, when you consider four players in the top ten of your league stolen bases, that's pretty good. Now, granted, they steal like crazy, but it pays off. So, Matt's hitting this one right into the corner. The throw over to second is not going to be in time. That's a great slide. But the Mets get a double. So they're starting to threaten here with another run. Got to make sure I stop them. Four to one. Still what we're looking at. The throw to the outside. This one's going to go into left field. Justin Upton will make the catch. And that's going to be the inning. All right, so threat annihilated. Mets going to the bullpen yet again to try and see what they can do to prevent me from scoring any more runs here and give themselves a chance here. 
towards the end of the game. Top of the ninth, 2-2 count. This one going in the left center. I'm in around first. Get on over to second. And I'll get there and be safe. All right, so Freddie Freeman getting that double right here in the top of the ninth. This is the time where I'd really want to go ahead and start pouring it on him because if I can uh, add to my lead here, the chances of the Mets coming back here reduces significantly. So Freeman will come home with that RBI double. So that's going to make it a four-run game now. Mets again going to the bullpen and that was pretty smart given the fact that we got a couple hits over what two three pitches and one one run to add to what we already have so Bobby Parnell will try and come in again attempting to hold me here BJ Upton now on the 2-2 count will hit this one in to center field I'm gonna go ahead and round third head home throwing with all his momentum and I am safe was that a close one or what? If I had hesitated just a little bit, or if McCann didn't have that type of speed, well, we would have been we would have been in trouble there. All right, so this one's gonna go into left field. It's gonna be a single here for the Mets. We are in the bottom of the ninth, so they got to go ahead and try and get five runs, I believe. Yep, just to tie the game up and send this one into overtime. Right. Going to hit this one on the ground. Ugla is going to step on second and then make the throw over to first. Double play. It's the third one in the game for us here. It's always nice to be able to get those double plays. I always get excited. Just because I don't think um, in baseball, you know, just uh, defensive plays really get as much attention. I mean, everybody's all about like, the home runs and you know, all that stuff here. But a good double play, man, that's something I get excited about. Just seeing some great defense. All right, two outs now here in the bottom of the ninth. Got to make sure that I stop him right here. Of course, Miner's not going for a, a complete game shutout, but I will go ahead and accept a complete game. Anytime I can get a complete game, I'm going to be happy about that because that means my bullpen gets an extra day of rest. So the times where I'm not playing is the computer, or uh, I'm not playing here and the computer is playing in my stead, so I'm simulating it. Um, I want to make sure that they have the best chance possible to be able to win. And if everybody is healthy, then we can always choose from the best pitcher in the bullpen. So I always look for this, even in a situation like this here where I'm really tired. I can't make too many good throws here. I'm about ready to hit 100 pitches. That'd be sweet if I can get it out right here. On the 100th pitch, the game would be done and over with. That'd be sweet. But like I said, I just want to make sure I give him the best chance that I can when I'm not playing. So always looking looking for this here. I mentioned, even when I'm tired, I think it's going to be worth it here because it's not like they're going to get five runs or anything before I get one out. It's possible, yes, but very unlikely. So I'm taking the risk. Curveball not able to stay in the strike zone. Falls way too low. 2-2 Two -two count. All right, so I think I can go ahead and get him right here. If I follow what McCann says, throw that four-seam fastball outside. Ah, he fouls that one back. Still 2-2. Two -two. He's just refusing to go down. I have no energy. All right, going to try and throw the four-seamer high. Swing and a miss. That will be the ball game. So Miner having a great performance, his first start in the second half. Braves end up winning this one here. So thanks for watching, you guys. I sure do appreciate it. Again, sorry, only two videos, but technical problems. I almost didn't get even this put up. So you guys are phenomenal people. You really are. Thank you again, you guys. And as always, I hope you guys have a good one.